Scientists in Sweden are testing that concept for the first time ever. They've analyzed extinct animals' RNA, which also carries genetic information. They're studying the Tasmanian tiger, which has been extinct since the 1930s. For more, let's bring in one of the study's authors, Mark Friedlander. He's an associate professor in molecular biology at Stockholm University. Mark, thanks for being with us. Scientists have examined DNA from extinct animals before, but never RNA. What's the significance? Right. I mean, I think the simple answer is that people didn't think it could really be done. So as you say, uh, DNA is a very, very stable molecule. So people have found it in mammoths, for instance, that are more than uh, a million years old, in soil samples that are more than two million years old. But in contrast, RNA is very, very transient. So, you know, if I would take some RNA and smear it here on the table, it would be destroyed in a matter of minutes. Mm. So briefly, a very, very few researchers really looked into this topic before. And I would say that it has been considered a little bit kind of fringe maybe huh. and so you could, you could argue why why is rna really important and and i mean very very briefly so uh, genes are encoded in dna and when they are active they're transcribed into rna copies that send messages to the cell what to do and therefore so if we detect the dna of an extinct animal we know what genes were there mm. but if we get the rna we actually know, know what the genes were doing, uh, which ones were active. So it gives a whole new dimension of information to, oh, right. to DNA. F fascinating. It's like a whole new level of data around genetic information. So what are you learning from the RNA of the Tasmanian tiger? Right. I mean, I think uh, at this point, it's mostly a proof of concept that it can be done. So we have uh, really verified that these data that we detect are authentic, and they are from the Tasmanian tiger. And um, we do detect a couple of new genes that could not have been discovered from the DNA by itself. So I think that's very exciting. But I think mostly it's really a kind of proof of concept that this can be done. And I think this has uh, implications because we have all of these millions of, um, of desiccated animal specimens in museums all over the planet. And now we can access and unlock all of the information that are stored in, in these and in their RNA. So I think that's very, very exciting. So big picture, what does it mean for science? Right. I mean, it, it means we can, we can look into what the genes were actually doing in all of these historical and potential uh, ancient samples when the animals were actually living. And I think another very interesting application of this is that, you know, some, some very interesting and important viruses like uh, SARS-CoV-2, they are RNA viruses. That means that if you only have DNA data, you're basically blind to their history. And if we look at the RNA, we can then see actually the history of these viruses and how they have adapted and evolved, and it might become easier to predict, predict their behavior also. So we can look at these in, in virus reservoirs like bats and, and see basically how these viruses have evolved. And without RNA, we couldn't do that. Well, it sounds very exciting that you're really getting a more complete picture of the genetic data because you've got two sets, the DNA and the RNA. But of course, the bottom line is, can science be used now to bring extinct animals back to life? Right. I think that's a very, very interesting question. I think the ethical implications are also very interesting. I think for the Tasmanian tiger, you could say that uh, the, these were actually brought to extinction by humans not very long ago. So in this case, we would be kind of correcting our own interference. Uh, but uh, I think what is important is that these de-extension -ex efforts, they have been very DNA-centered so far, looking very much at the DNA of extinct species. And I think that if at some point in the future we are to bring back some of these species, it's very important to also look at the rest of the complements that are necessary in the living creatures like RNA and protein and membranes and all of that if we want to bring back these exact animals and not say something that looks like them. Well, there's no question that the science is extremely exciting here. Mark Friedlander, thank you for your analysis and for the update.
Thank you.